How's it going guys? It is 3.50 a.m. Wednesday, July 13th here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for micro slash immuno for step one. Exceedingly high yield, okay? I've made prior clips of my audio cue bank here harping on this detail. Very fucking important for step one. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 69-year-old man, 12-hour history of lower left quadrant pain, temperature 103 Fahrenheit, heart rate 90, respiratory rate 18, blood pressure 90 over 55. CT of the abdomen with contrast shows diverticulitis with perforation. Blood cultures are drawn and empiric IV antibiotic therapy initiated. Question wants to know binding which of the following is the most likely mechanism for this patient's hypotension. So perforated diverticulitis, obviously this can cause septic shock here and you need to know for 2CK, yes, we diagnose CT of the abdomen with contrast. That's the modality we use. Do not fucking scope in acute diverticulitis. You can cause perforation. We have that here already, but in general, never fucking choose colonoscopy, sigmoidoscopy, et cetera, for acute diverticulitis. After the patient convalesces slash heals, you schedule a follow-up colonoscopy to rule out cancer slash malignancy. And empiric IV antibiotic therapy uh, is going to be metronidazole uh, plus a fluoroquinolone or metronidazole plus Augmentin, US simile doesn't give a fuck. I'm just entertaining it here. The step one stuff, you could be like, oh, okay, metronidazole, that's anaerobes below the diaphragm, okay? So let's just whip through the answer choices here. What's the mechanism for this patient's hypotension? Uh, choices A and B, IFN gamma receptor, IL 12 receptor, wrong fucking answers, okay? Step one is not numerical now, clearly. Uh, you could be aware that macrophages secrete. IL-12, which will activate Th0 cells in a Th1, as well as activate already existing Th1 cells to secrete IF and gamma, which in turn activates macrophages to secrete more IL-12. Okay, as I just fucking said, we don't have a numerical step one anymore. You don't have to get hysterical about this, but I'm just telling you the relevance of these uh, cytokines slash chemokines for USMLE. You could be aware that IL-12 receptor deficiency increases the proclivity for tuberculosis infections, okay? So if you have a mutation in that receptor, we can give IF and gamma as a treatment in theory. It's low yield. The point is, wrong fucking answers. Choice C, MHC1, wrong answer. Obviously a lot we could talk about. MHC1 is going to present, present live intracellular antigen, almost always viral, uh, on the cell surface for expression to uh, CD8 plus T cells. And you should know that MHC1 requires uh, intracellular association with beta-2 microglobulin or TAP proteins uh, for uh, expression on the cell surface. There's a drug that's mentioned twice on the new NBME exams, bortezomib, bortezomib, which is a protease inhibitor and that will decrease MHC1 expression and decrease activation of CD8 plus T cells. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, MHC2 and T cell receptor. Wrong answer, albeit exceedingly high yield for US simile. You need to know that super antigen, okay, toxic shock syndrome toxin, TSST toxin, staph aureus, as well as exotoxin A from strep pyogenes, which, which can cause toxic shock-like syndrome, okay? They'll give you a cellulitis caused by gram-positive cocci in chains if they want toxic shock-like syndrome from strep pyogenes, or for toxic shock syndrome, they'll give you cotton packing in the nose or tampon use. I've seen one question where they didn't mention cotton packing for toxic shock syndrome, but they mentioned a rash on the palms and soles. Rocky Mountain spot fever was the wrong answer. They, gave, they said they said rash, not desquamation, the palms and soles, with hypotension, the answer was toxic shock syndrome. But the point is, you need to know that superantigen is going to bridge MHC2 on macrophages with T cell receptor on CD4 plus T cells. That's going to cause the macrophage to release cytokines. TNF alpha causes increased vascular permeability, uh, leaky vessels, and hypotension, uh, vascular dilation. So if they ask you for which chemokine cytokine is responsible for hypotension, it's TNF alpha. Uh, IL-1 is responsible for fever. Okay, very important that distinction. And toll-like receptor is the correct answer. Okay, so TLR4, aka CD14 on macrophages, 
uh, this is where endotoxin binds, okay? So the lipid A of LPS, lipopolysaccharide from gram negatives, that's going to bind TLR4, CD14, and similar to uh, the prior answer choice, the macrophage will release cytokines in response. And you say, well, how do we come across that? Why are we saying that this is necessarily endotoxic shock? Okay, well, we have perforated diverticulitis. So this is likely E. coli, gram-negative rod, bacteroides, gram-negative rod, okay, the most common uh, bacteria in the GI tract. It's not going to be Staph aureus or Strep pyogenes, okay? So that's the mini difficulty level up in this question. And then uh, this distinction between the MHC2 T-cell receptor for the superentian uh, versus toll-like receptor CD14 for endotoxin, exceedingly high yield on US simile. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.